Let me remind us all that we're now five years from the Lemon disaster, right? But the financial, as uh, both Mariana and the minister referred to, the financial malfunction uh, refuses to go away. So let me start these uh, brief remarks by provoking you with the following quote. Nuclear power and financial systems both have the capacity to blow up the world. I wish I had altered that, but that, of course, some of you re read. This is from John Kay. But let's keep this in mind while, while I deliver the other provocations. Okay. So the, the nine, 2008 financial crisis uh, and subsequent efforts of financial reform, they offer us a host of lessons, right? Well, first, that it was a privately generated but publicly fixed measure financial chaos. We know that. Very important, it was financial chaos immersed in frauds and in banking scandals, as we're witnessing almost daily. So that's, again, another way to say how sick the financial, private financial system is. Um, furthermore, it became clear, and we are in the same page here, uh, and it's not by accident the speakers here, it became clear that most Western private finance retreated, just retreated from, from funding accumulation and innovation. It's <coughs> specialized in gambling, often gambling against its clients. That's some sort of new. So no loans for, for production. Prime Min in that sense, Prime Minister Cameron's recent, recent trip to China was basically to attract. To attract what? Investment. What kind of investment? Public investment, because it's going to come from the Chinese public banks. For in infrastructure. And I think that is a very telling example of that. Another one is the fact that in the UK, home mortgage and lending to financial business tripled since the 90s, and they, they, they're climbing to 98, 98% of GDP, while lending to non-financial business stayed at 25% of GDP as in 1990. That's another telling example of the same thing. In talking about the global rescue, the global rescue from the crisis, reinforced, I would say, a new financial deal in the making, which is a deal where public financial institutions are at the core. They are the core players in restoring growth. They are the ones reshaping the financial landscape, not only central banks, but also regulatory agencies, public and development banks, sovereign wealth funds, and other uh, public entities. China and Brazil are very good examples, maybe the best examples in that venue. Not only the crisis was avoided in Brazil and in China, but also serious industrial policy took place during the crisis, and the countries and the economies grew, actually. They both grew during the crisis, and the, I repeat, public financial institutions were at the core of this event, of this uh, effort. As for regulation and reform, thinking about this, I think our message here is that the goal should not be restricted to fix market failures and increase transparency, but rather to reshape the fundamental institutional arrangements that define the financial landscape. And why is that? Because the state is the guarantor of first resort of the market, of market integrity. It's also the state is the major liquidity <coughs> provider, deal maker, and as we saw, crisis manager. Summing up this, the state not only supervises markets, especially financial markets, the state creates, shapes, and keep them running. Therefore, I think it's quite clear that a new architecture for financial governance has to be acknowledged and has to be created. And 
the central things, it would take too much to go into detail on this, but let me just throw two, two ideas here. As central elements of this new uh, financial governance framework, I would suggest, number one, placing public financial institutions at its core, because they're already there. And number two, to recast private finance from its current, currently socially and economically close to useless role and turning them from, let's call it, a bad master into a good servant, or if it's doable, into a trustable partner, which it, it didn't behave like that, at least in the last maybe three decades, especially in the last decade. So my concluding message here, in terms of just opening up uh, for the discussions and the debates we're gonna have uh, right after my colleagues speak, is the following. Well, some of you might be thinking, is this a recipe for communism? <laughs> as the Tea Party, as the Tea Party would probably claim, <coughs> or is this some idea of the Chinazification of uh, Western economies? I would say no, not really. This was precisely the prescription of a very distinguished Britain to restore capitalism 70, 70 years ago, Lord Keynes. Well, the need for a comprehensive socialization of investment he laid out in chapter 24 of the General Theory, 1936, as we all know, well, it helped to give us Bretton Woods and a long period of financial order and growth. And let me suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, I think this has to be revisited in order for us to go forward. We have to look back to go forward. And this is one of the starting points that I think is worth <coughs> thinking about. Uh, just to uh, give you the names, not the provocations, but the names of my colleagues that will deliver their own provocations in up to seven minutes, I'm afraid. There's a lot to say, but they will have to restrict themselves to the seven minutes we sort of uh, discussed before. We'll have a dream team. Mm -hmm. Professor Nye Woods, the Dean of Oxford Blavatni Blavatnik uh, School of Governance. Uh, Professor Bill Lazonic from University of Massachusetts Lowell and Airnet. Uh, Professor Randall Ray from uh, University of Massachusetts, uh, Kansas City, and Professor Jan Kregel from the Levy Institute uh, at Bard College. And just to finish up, we also have uh, some other colleagues at the table which are not, are not going to deliver their own provocations today but they are also in the Ford Network, the Ford Foundation Network or initiative called Reforming Global Financial Governance that I'm running. And uh, the interesting and fruitful aspect of this network is that it's really a network in the sense that the projects, they talk to each other. We're having tomorrow a whole day of uh, a sort of a uh, conversation, a joint conversation in terms of how to better integrate the projects in, among themselves and always thinking about the policy implications, uh, not only the theory behind, but okay, we have this theory, we have those maybe new or different alternative ideas, what sort of policy implications come from those ideas where we are in that business. So we have uh, people like Rainer Cattell, like Rogério Sobreira, I think Mustak Khan should be here, I think he for some reason missed at the last minute, but we have quite a robust network with projects ranging from uh, Rio de Janeiro to Buenos Aires to Beijing to Delhi uh, to obviously Washington DC, Oxford, London and other venues. So it's really, I repeat, uh, a, a global network trying to get those things together and again and to finish up to get to the policy implications that really matter. Thank you very much, and please uh, let me welcome uh, 
Professor Nyawoods. Thank you very much.